Which we will make a, we will, start. colleagues, we'll, we'll make a start. Uh, I welcome via teleconference Ms Leanne Donaldson, the state member for Bundaberg, and representatives of the Gadarjal Development Group and the Bundaberg Awareness Group. I'm Senator Dean Smith, the acting chair of the committee for today, and I've with me Senator Rachel Seawitt, the deputy chair, Senator Murray Watt from Queensland, and Senator Kokoski Moore from South Australia. For the Hansard record, will you please state your full names and the capacity in which you appear today also, would you also please confirm that information on parliamentary privilege and the protection of witnesses and evidence has been provided to you? I'll then invite each of you to make an opening statement. Time is precious, so if we can keep those as brief as possible to allow for questions. And if you could each just identify yourself each time you speak for the benefit of the transcript. Would you, Ms Donaldson, would you begin by just identifying yourself and the position with which you're appearing today? Uh, yes, uh, I'm Leanne Donaldson and I'm the state member for Bundaberg. And you've received the information on parliamentary privilege and the protection of witnesses and evidence? I have, yes. Great, thank you. And representatives of the Gadarjal Development Corporation, would you just identify yourselves? Uh, my name is Jennifer Mason. I'm the Arts Development Officer at Gadarjal. Thank you. Um, Melinda Holden. I'm an elder and a language worker with the Gadarjal Development Company. Great. Thank you very much. Sharisma Blackman. I'm a contractor for service delivery of cultural awareness for Gadarjal Development Corporation. And you've all had information provided to you on parliamentary privilege and the protection of witnesses and evidence? Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. And finally, uh, representatives from the Bundaberg Awareness Group. Um, my name is Daniel Stafford. I'm a founding member and organiser from Bundaberg Awareness Group. And is Miss Fierick with us as well? My name is Sharon Fierick. I am also a member of the Bundaberg Awareness Group. Great. And you both had information on Parliament privilege and protection of witnesses and evidence provided to you? Yes, yes, I have. Great. Thanks. We'll start with you, Ms Donaldson. If you'd like to make a brief opening statement. There's no obligation to, but if you'd like to. OK, thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. I was elected to represent the Bundaberg community in the 2015 Queensland election. Since this time, I've worked very hard to get out and about, um, consulting with people, listening to their issues and getting a range uh, of, of a range of topics. When our federal member for Hinkler first spoke about his push for a trial of the cashless welfare card here in uh, the federal electorate of Hinkler, um, he spoke about the reasons for this area being a trial for the card. He spoke about unemployment, um, which is an entrenched issue, and yes, I agree with him on that. However, I do not agree with his view that income management will fix this issue. There is no way that reducing a person's ability to use cash on public transport to get to a job active appointment or to a job interview or their ability to purchase tucked off by cheap fresh fruit and vegetables at our local markets will assist them to make better choices or to get a job. It won't make people with drug addiction or mental illness suddenly cease their behaviours. I've had the opportunity uh, to do a lot of research on this issue and speak to a lot of people. I've read both Wave 1 and Wave 2 of the Orama reports. Um, and I, along with others who have been in the media, um, who have been quite critical of this report, have found many faults with the um, outcomes that have found in the reports from the data provided. Um, I don't believe that the questions or that the scales that were used in the report would stand up to any scrutiny um, in you know, reliability or validity. I suspect that any of the differences found in behaviour wouldn't be statistically significant. Um, they've failed to control for a number of variables um, to ensure that it is actually um, the card that is making the difference, not other things that are happening in conjunction with the card. Um, I have, my background is um, I have a, do, a bachelor's degree of psychology. I've done social psychology and I've um, done statistics and data and um, if I'd handed in a report like this as a psych student, I would have failed. I've also researched the data uh, from different police districts around Queensland in relation to crime. Um, I've found that nowhere has the Wide Bay Police District sat, sat as an outlier in any crime such as drug offences, assault, robbery or domestic violence. In fact, in a number of these areas in relation to crime, the rates are declining uh, as they've been reported by police. Uh, in relation to gambling, um, in the city of Bundaberg that I represent, uh, people over 35 are more frequent visitors and users of poker machines, not young people. 
Um, in relation to uh, the federal member talking about his wide consultation, um, his consultation has been selective and secretive. Um, it hasn't been open. Uh, in uh, contrast to that, I've held, uh, I've, I held a community forum in Bundaberg on the 5th of June um, and I made it an open invitation. I invited the federal member um, to come along. He chose not to. I didn't send a representative. I had for our community over 120 people um, attended. I started a petition, uh, a paper okay, petition Johnson, and an online petition Mr. to Johnson, the um, House of me. Representatives. Excuse me, Mrs Donald, so I just want to alert you to the fact that we are in very, very limited time okay. for this um, uh, segment and we do well, have some others to make opening okay. statements. I've, I've, um, I've done a lot of research. I don't believe it is right for this community. I believe it's divisive. It will not achieve the outcomes and I believe there are other ways. Um, so I'm, I'm very against the implementation of this card in the Bundaberg area. Thank you, Ms Donaldson. Would someone like from the Gadajal Development Corporation like to make a brief opening statement? Yes, Shrisma Blackman here. Uh, I take on board all of Minister Donaldson's points. Uh, from an Indigenous perspective, I was more interested in the parliamentary um, committee and the senators having uh, adhered to all the human rights and um, make sure that the discrimination, racial discrimination was not contravened in implementing this card. I understand that there was a couple of Aboriginal communities where this card was um, the pilot program of, and we have all different issues, social issues across Australia. The people in the Cape York have different issues to Bundaberg and so forth when you go to Kimberley's and then to South Australia. Um, the role of the... Um, the working committee and that, I've seen all the reports and everything. I strongly suggest that there should have been more Indigenous engagement on these potential communities and that. I know Gadarjal's taking a bit of a role now with um, Minister Donaldson in looking at um, whether it should not be implemented in Bundaberg or so. Um, I believe that, that we, we have all these issues and that, but is this the real cause of it? is not having the ability to manage money properly, the real cause of why we have family violence, why we have high rates in child protection, in incarceration rights of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, and limited access to employment and education. So I would like a bit more done around um, the consultation with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities. And I also would like to have a healing program or process after the um, if this does get passed, for the participants to have the um, sensitive and culturally um, provided uh, healing programs and that, for them to blend back in with the community and that. It's not just waving a wand, get rid of this problem, put them over here, and our children and our other vulnerable people like elders and that are going to be affected by everything as well. So if only Linda would like to put something on with this statement here. Um, I'm pretty much um, ready for questioning. Yeah, OK, thanks, Charisma. I just can't see properly today, so Jennifer's going to read it for me. Um, yeah, the concerns that we have around the cash card is they're detrim detrimental to the wellbeing of um, people, of our people, and, um, it, you know, we feel that it further drives uh, a nail into their coffin. So what's next? Next to put them into compounds because that's what we think this card represents. Um, we've seen from our work at Gadajal, which is based in Bundaberg and the surrounding region, that participants, when given the opportunity to learn skills and be shown pathways to sustainable living, that participants are respons responsive and these programs that enable earning while learning have had great success. Um, rates and provide real accounts of empowerment to participants and their families to make different choices. Um, we believe that the, the cost that we understand is 10,000 per participant um, for implementing this cashless card program could be better utilised through programs such as ours that provide um, certificates in areas of construction skills and environmental practices which are stepping stones in many cases and a springboard to the, the much needed full-time employment um, to uh, eliminate a lot of these problems. These programs provide the participants with positive reinforcement and capacity building on individual and community levels. And participants are educated both culturally and in skills which build personal self 
self-esteem and worth. Um, we believe that the cashless card program should target specific offenders and re-offenders and not be a blanket program. And um, we feel that the statistics from the interim report of March 2017 um, from the Department of Social Services should show that and be an indicator that this program is not effective in its current form and we do not agree that the program should be extended beyond its original finish date of the um, 30th of June 2018. Thank you very much. Would someone like the, from the Bundaberg Awareness Group like to make a brief opening statement because we will be concluding at quarter to two in order to hear with the rest of the program. Okay, I'll keep this very brief, just a little bit about our group. Bundaberg Awareness Group is a community collective who have actively been working in Bundaberg, helping people access information about the cashless card and listening to community concerns. We have also been active in seeking signatures for petitions with both Leanne Donaldson and the No Cashless Card Hinkler Group. Today we would like to point out issues with community inclusion, community concerns, the lack of community consultation and information availability as well as key issues we feel are negative pertaining to the implementation of the cashless card in our area. Great, thanks very much. Senator Watt, would you like to start? Um, thank you for your time today. Ms Donaldson, if I can start with you, um, and if you can just answer quite uh, concisely because of lack of time, unfortunately. Sure. Um, I take it your view is that there has been inadequate consultation from the government with the local community about this trial? I do. The consultation uh, has been very selective and very secretive. Um, as a community leader, I've had, uh, been, I've had no approach from um, either the minister or the federal member to include me in any consultation. In fact, Minister Tudge uh, has been, came to town and did a media interview across the road from my office and then had a meeting a block away on the other side and then the afternoon before sent an email inviting me to meet with him in Melbourne, knowing full well he was going to be in Bundaberg. So I feel that I've been actively excluded uh, and that uh, it is, there have not been any opportunities uh, for people in the community to um, have their voices heard at all. Are you aware of any consultation whatsoever with recipients of Centrelink benefits? Uh, not to my knowledge. Um, the government says that one of its objectives in your area is to encourage young people into work. Have you got a view on whether this is likely to help young people in Bundaberg find work? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, in fact, I have uh, just been with Minister Fentiman um, half an hour ago talking about our, the programs we're doing as a state government where we have uh, helped over 1,000 people in Bundaberg get jobs in the three years. Uh, we've talked about the programs we have, such as Skilling Queenslanders for Work, uh, Back to Work. We've got a youth boost. We've been out talking to employers that have been uh, employing young people and taking apprenticeships. There is a, a, a lot more being done proactively, and I believe there are better outcomes that can be met than uh, using incentives than using punishments, which will further entrench poverty in people. What I've seen some media reports about other if you like, community leaders and political candidates and political members in the Hinkler federal electorate. Are you able to just give us a quick overview of what some of these people have said about the card? Uh, yes, I, sir, I can. Um, I'm aware um, our, the LNP member for Burnett, uh, they have been quite elusive um, in their statements. However, the, the state member for Burnett signed a petition on the implementation supporting it. Um, I know that the uh, One Nation candidates in the Hinkler electorate um, have had different views. The uh, One Nation candidate in Harvey Bay is against the card. However, the One Nation candidate in Bundaberg has been sitting on the fence saying everyone should just get along. Um, I don't know how we do that when there are opposing views to a situation. And I'm aware that, um, that Pauline Hanson has um, Expl uh, has confirmed her support to implement the card. Um, I also know that our regional council have uh, abstained from having any public view. However, I don't know if there have been discussions in private with the local government. And what more can you say about the government's claim that there is community support for this initiative? Do you think that's accurate? Uh, no, I don't. I'm aware that uh, 
uh, the federal member has sent out community surveys that were uh, not compulsory, that they were voluntary, voluntarily returned. Uh, a lot of social media online said people were not even going to bother returning it. I've seen evidence of those surveys being sent to one household that might have more than one person um, but only one survey. So it, the data is not accurate. It is not, um, doesn't portray the views of this community. It's very selective and um, I, I, I'm completely of the view that there has not been uh, proper and thorough and rigorous community consultation at all. Can, can I add to that? This is Jennifer Mason from Gadagel. Um, there hasn't been any consultation. Um, Gadagel is uh, probably considered the largest Indigenous organisation in Bundaberg and there hasn't been any approach from um, the, the Federal um, Minister uh, in regards to this or in fact anything and he has been invited to come um, and I have personally invited him to come to our um, our officers to see what we do, but we haven't had any consultation at all Senator of Kukos this. Gidargel, you mentioned in your opening statement that you don't think the card should be a blanket rollout, but it should only be targeted at specific offenders. Um, who do you mean by specific offenders? Was this to me or Annie Linda? Yes, yes, of course. Um, why should why should all uh, recipients of the the unemployment benefit be classed under this this card? Um, it, if, the, if the problem is gambling and um, drugs and domestic violence, it, they should be the ones that are put on this program. It and how, how would they be the identified? The, the, the offenders and the re-offenders should be one of their punishments to go on under this card, but it certainly shouldn't be the people that are out there and are not of their own liking to be on 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 this payment and have to come under this uh, um, very uh, communist rule. So the um, people, the people who you said uh, have alcohol problems or gambling problems yeah. or might be um, perpetrators of domestic violence, how would they be identified? Would it be through the criminal justice system or? Well, uh, the cops are called all the time, aren't they? Mm -hmm. When there's a domestic violence. Police are called around to those situations. Well, it's about time that the police really carried out these um, these uh, calls of help from women that are getting um, the, the domestic violence against them. So it's not, it's not, don't blame the rest of the community. The police and the offenders should really be the ones that are sorting themselves out. If they don't have that, um, the police don't have that, information, they should get it because I can tell you the police sirens are going around everywhere here and it's on domestic violence or drugs. Can I just add the um, department, sorry this is Jennifer, that was Melinda, um, the Department of Social Services interim report March 2017 said one of the points was um, over one third of participants reported not engaging in, in the activities the trial focuses on before the trial commenced. So I guess the statistics that they have derived could be um, uh, utilised in that instance. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when did you all be first become available that Hinkler might be a trial site? On the news. Um, I think I was aware of it um, personally when I uh, saw the the um, forum that um, Leanne Donaldson um, was organising. Any, anybody else? No, I just seen it on the news and I didn't realise it was so close. There's really been nothing around you know, for community consultation, really. So has there ever been any community consultation around what you would like to see in your community in terms of addressing, well, A, that there's agreement about what the issues are um, that you would like to see addressed, but also consultation about how they could be addressed? From our federal member, you mean? Oh, uh, well, from, from either the, the state government or the federal government. Um, from the, from the, the state government, from the, um, 
Uh, Leanne Donaldson, we have a, um, quite a lot of um, communication on different um, things. Um, we also have a lot of um, uh, statement. Um, sorry, um, for Burnett, um, Steve Bennett. Sorry, um, he has. He we have quite um, a good relationship, and he comes to us for uh, you know with different. Uh, Different programs and different, uh, you know, seeking consultation from us on different things. Uh, sorry, who is this speaking? Yeah, who, who's talking? Sorry. Yes, it's Jennifer Charisma. Oh well, uh, can I just address this, please, from an Indigenous perspective, and that is that we have a native title community within that Tinkler, and we actually take the catchments of the Upper Burnett and the Gladstone areas. So we have three local councils in our native title area as well as um, the four tribes that make up the PCCC. Now our trust has been able to identify the socio issues that affect the native title holders for that group. So we've developed some white goods policies and other policies for those who are living on that poverty line and that who are part of our um, community within these regions. But then there's the other social stuff that um, has the intervention of government, whether it's prevention or whatever, the stats in the child protection, in the incarceration of the youth, it's a community issue. We try to do as much as we can as a traditional owner's perspective. We have our elders, they have a role in each of our tribes and clans, but to get something implemented from uh, government to a grassroots, it's the wider general community, like the association that's on here from Bundaberg, to work in collaboration with the local, state and federal governments to ensure community consultation occurs coalface to the grassroots people and communities. Because these statistics that I saw and the ones Jennifer was talking about before are just reflective of Sejuna. You cannot say Sejuna is a remote community. The community in uh, Western Australia, you can probably say that's a remote community. Different locations, some of the most prevalent issues in these communities, we have it here on our doorstep at Warabinda and Sherberg, as well as at Palm Island, is that the domestic and family violence, it can be identified through the scan process with Department of Health, the police and with the schools. They have a monthly meeting where everything comes up on the radar. So surely the Centrelink government, this legislation should be able to acquire these statistics and have that format and the framework where the consultation is for the wider community, the traditional owners play a role with their elders, and then all the self-determined stuff comes with it after. Uh, just a request of the witnesses, before making a contribution, if you could just state your name to make the transcription of your evidence as clear as possible for Hansard, that would be much appreciated. Senator Seward, a final question. Okay. Um, in terms of the when we read estimates last week, um, the department said that they'd consulted in your region. Have you been included in any of those consultations? From the federal member? Yeah. No. From the from the Department of Social Services and the federal government. Not that I'm aware of. Who was that? Who, who was that? Sorry. Uh, sorry, Jennifer, Jennifer Mason from Gadagal. Okay. Thank you. I have seen um, some reporting, again I think it was in the Senate estimates process last week, where the local federal member had directly mailed 32,000 constituents, phone polled around 500 local people, 5,500 direct emails. So I'm a bit curious, between, between May and September, so a bit curious to know why you haven't been involved in that. But before I come to that particular point, I do want to go back to what I think was the conversation a moment ago about why, so in the evidence today we have heard uh, from the Mayor of the District of Sejuna uh, talking about effective consultation, effective community panel process, uh, people having uh, the restrictions lifted on their, um, on their cards. I'm just curious to know why the positive benefits that, in my opinion, are being experienced in Sejuna aren't or can't possibly be experienced uh, in your communities? Or can they, do you think? Well, it's Melinda Holden here from yep. Gadarjo. Thank you, yep. And, like, I'm an elder, and I don't believe that any anybody, black or white, should be put 
under these constraints. It's nothing short of communism. So you can take it as you please, but here we have um, a, a liberal a coalition government um, beating around the bush about, uh, you know, Labor government, but here you are implementing this, this program that is clearly driven by communism. You are controlling our people. You are not helping them, you are stopping them, you are controlling them. So that's very, very um, insulting, and particularly to my people anyway. Um, uh, and you say we're not being racist or anything, but they are targeted, particularly at our people, because we have these um, things where we, maybe we do smoke drugs and, and that. But uh, I just think that this thing is uh, heading towards controlling people. And I didn't think that the coalition government was into that stuff. Okay, unfortunately uh, we are over time, but can I thank representatives from the Gadajo Development Group, the Bundaberg Awareness Group and the local state member for finding, finding some time outside of busy election campaigning period uh, to speak to us this afternoon. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tristan Blackman. Thanks.